Good morning. Welcome to worship this uh, morning after a snow. We had uh, quite a bit out there today, uh, but so glad that some of you were able to make it, and I'm sure we have many more online, so thank you for joining us there. A few announcements this morning. Um, our annual meeting is next week, the 31st, after worship, uh, and we'll stay right here in the sanctuary. Uh, and then the week after that, uh, Camp Okaboji is coming, uh, and they will make a presentation about the camp. Uh, and in addition, we are excited that we have some special, special music this morning. So uh, we look forward to enjoying that. With that, uh, we begin our worship with our gathering song, Here I Am, Lord, from the uh, With One Voice, page 7. 52. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in deepest sin, my hand will save. I, who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go. I, the Lord of snow and rain, I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them. They turn away. I will break their hearts of stone, give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go. I, the Lord of wind and flame, I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them, my hand will save. Finest bread I will provide, till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You are the treasured people of the Lord. 
a people holy to the Lord our God. Keep the words of the Lord in your heart. Teach them to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Salvation belongs to our God and to Christ the Lamb forever and ever. Great and wonderful are your deeds, O God of the universe. Just and true are your ways, O ruler of all the nations. Who can fail to honor you, Lord, and sing the glory of your name? Salvation belongs to our God and to Christ the Lamb forever and ever. For you alone are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and worship before you, for your just and holy works have been revealed. Salvation belongs to our God and to Christ the Lamb forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Son to proclaim your kingdom and to teach with authority. Anoint us with the power of your Spirit that we too may bring good news to the afflicted, bind up the brokenhearted, and proclaim liberty to the captive. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will now enjoy some special music. We've got two today. We'll just keep our six-foot distancing. You guys know how to do that, right? Although you guys can sit right together. All right. 
you want to face me, that would be great, because I'm going to talk to you guys today. So, I have been looking at some pictures. Do you guys know that I like to travel? I do. And one of the great places that I went to, we're actually going to talk about today in our gospel lesson. I went to the Holy Land. Do you guys know where the Holy Land is? Uh, it's in the Middle East. It's where Jesus walked, where Jesus did his ministry. And so I had a class uh, when I was in seminary. Do you know what seminary is? It's a special school to become a pastor. So when I was in seminary at school, I took a class and we went to the Holy Land. And one day, we went to the Sea of Galilee. Here is a picture of me. You can see the Sea of Galilee. I'm standing uh, right in front of where they think that Peter lived uh, in this town, Capernaum, on the Sea of Galilee. It what? It looks fun. It was very fun. Yeah, it was really fun. And here, as you can see, my pictures didn't, it was supposed to be a full page picture, didn't quite work out, did it? Uh, but here is a picture that I took over a fence, and this is looking down, and do you see the water in the background? There's water back there. Uh, this is the, the lake here, and then the sky. This is overlooking the Sea of Galilee, where they think that Jesus gave the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, which is this big, long uh, speech that he gave, and they think that the, he did it there. And then I have one final picture. What do you see here? It's a boat, yeah. We actually rode on this boat on the Sea of Galilee, me and uh, my fellow students who were in seminary. So... Uh, today, what we're going to hear in the Gospel of Mark is that Jesus uh, is gathering up his group of friends, or what we call disciples. Do you guys know what a disciple is? It's a learner, somebody who's going to learn from somebody else. So that who do you think the disciples are going to learn from? Jesus, yeah, they're going to learn from Jesus, right? So he's calling them by the Sea of Galilee. They're fishing, uh, and he came and found them working, and he said, follow me, and guess what happened? They followed him immediately. They just left what they were doing. He said, come, I'm going to help you. I'm going to make you fish for people instead of fish. They didn't even question what that meant, right? They didn't say, what do you mean? Are we going to have to stick people underwater and then pull them out with the hook? Or what are we going to do? They didn't ask any questions. They didn't give notice. You know what give notice is? They didn't tell their boss, here's my two weeks. I'm going to be done in two weeks. They didn't do that. They didn't talk to their mom and dad about it. They didn't talk to their wives about it. You know what they did? They just dropped their nets and they followed after Jesus. Now, in my life, I had something similar to that happen. Now, I didn't just drop everything. I gave my job months of notice. Uh, but I haven't always been a pastor. Do you think I was a fisherman? No, I wasn't a fisherman. I don't really even like fishing. I do it because my family does, but I don't like it. I know, it's terrible, isn't it? You don't like fishing? All right, we do an air high five, right? We don't like fishing. I like to take a book and read. Uh, but I worked for, in Duluth, and I was a supervisor at the Public Works and Utilities. Do you know what Public Works and Utilities does? They make sure that you have water. They make sure, we made sure that people had gas for heat uh, and Sewage. Do you know what sewage is? It's the stuff that goes down the sink and the toilet, right? It's got to go someplace. You don't want it in your house, do you? No. You want it to go somewhere? Well, we did that, and my job was to make sure that people paid their bills, right? 
I got the bills out, supervised getting the bills out and making sure that people paid them. And one day, I heard God's word. I heard the word of Jesus. It wasn't just one day, but it was over time. And I heard how much Jesus loved me and that he died for me and that he forgave me everything. And guess what I did? I decided to quit my job and sell my house and I moved my daughter with me to St. Paul. You guys know where the Twin Cities is? You've been there, right? Doing fun stuff. I moved there and we went to seminary. I went to school to become a pastor. Now, sometimes it's like that when we hear God's word, right? He calls us to follow him. Now, do you think everybody just quits their job and becomes a pastor? No, no. But when we hear Jesus' word, pretty soon we start leaving behind old things and we start grabbing on to the new things that Jesus has to give for, to us. Now, you guys were both adopted in the waters of baptism, right? Right here in this baptismal font, were you guys baptized right here? You were, right? And so God, Jesus, in your baptism, do you know what he said? He said, follow me. And so now Jesus is in the process of making you his followers so that you know just how much Jesus loves you, uh, so that you know he's never, ever going to let you go, uh, and so that you know that he's going to give you everything that you need for all your days here on earth so you don't have to worry, right? Uh, and that there's nothing that can happen, nothing you can do, nothing anybody else can do that's going to take God's love away from you, right? You belong to God forever. That's a pretty great promise, isn't it? That God's never, ever, ever uh, going to turn away from you, but he's going to be with you always. And here's the thing. Following him isn't always easy, right? Right? Uh, but he's got a word, and he keeps giving it to us and making us followers every time he hears, we hear his word. And guess what he also promises? Just like you were singing, Jonah, he's going to make you guys fishers of men, right? So that the more that you learn about Jesus and how much he loves you, pretty soon we start telling other people about Jesus, don't we? that Jesus did this for you, and then they start following after Jesus too. Does that sound pretty great? All right. And today, you actually shared the word with us, right? So you actually did that today. You preached the word to us through song, and that was really wonderful. You did a great job. Will you guys pray with me, and you folks too? Let us pray. Dear Jesus, Thank you for your word. Thank you for calling us to follow you. Thank you for being with us no matter what. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, thank you guys for coming up. I'm going to grab you after Sunday school, and I'll give you your treats then, okay? Because I always see you guys then. I forgot to bring the basket out, but you'll get some treats, all right? So thanks for coming up. I'm sorry, honey? Okay. Sure. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, guys.
right. Our first reading today is from the third chapter of Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim it to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Here ends the reading. Let us read responsibly Psalm 63. For God alone I wait in silence. From God comes my salvation. God alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall never be shaken. How long will all of you assail me to crush me as if I were a leaning fence, a toppling wall? They seek only to bring me down from my place of honor. They take pleasure in lies. They bless with their lips, but in their hearts they curse. For God alone I wait in silence. Truly my hope is in God. God alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold so that I shall never be shaken. In God is my deliverance and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in God always, O people. Pour out your hearts before the one who is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Those of low estate cannot be trusted. Placed on the scales together, they weigh even less than a breath. Put no trust in extortion. In robbery, take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice I have heard it. That power belongs to God. Steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord. For you repay all according to their deeds. Our second lesson is from uh, the seventh chapter of 1 Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as if they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as if they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the word as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Word of life, Jesus Christ, all glory to you. Word of life, Jesus Christ, all praise to you. Our hearts burn within us, while you open to us the scriptures. Word of life, Jesus Christ, all glory to you. Word of life, Jesus Christ, all praise to you. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. 
As he went a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boats, mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In confirmation, when I'm teaching on the Ninth and Tenth Commandments, which deal with coveting, I ask the students to make a list of ten of their hopes and daydreams. And they seem to really like this exercise, and they have no problem whatsoever finding ten things to list. We often spend our time not in the present moment, but anticipating the future, hoping and dreaming and planning. We find ourselves excitedly looking forward to such things as family gatherings, vacations, or even retirement. And we expect that these things will be our greatest joy, just what we've always wanted, and through them that we will find a deep and lasting contentment. Now, some of us even have what we call a bucket list, right? A list of experiences or achievements that we hope to have or to accomplish during our lifetime. Now, what we hope tells a lot about who we are and what it is that we think defines us. We're constantly waiting for our time of fulfillment to come when we at last reach that pinnacle. And deep down, we're hoping to leave behind us some sort of legacy, something that gives lasting meaning to our lives here on earth. Now, the people of Israel were hoping and waiting for something too, specifically They were waiting for a new Moses. They anticipated that the coming Messiah would be just like Moses, the lawgiver. The new Moses would bring to fulfillment that place and time where they would finally have the power and the authority over their own lives and the people of other nations around them. They believed that the new Moses would bring them a law and the means of being able to fulfill that law themselves. And of course, this is how we think of the law, right? I haven't fully done the law, but I will one day, right? I'll get all my ducks in a row, and then I'll get a reward, right? I'll be at that place uh, where I will finally have... Uh, fulfillment and peace and contentment. But when the Messiah, Jesus, actually arrives, he comes not as a new Moses with the law, but he comes with a promise, saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This promise has at last arrived to put true hope in God's people. Jesus brings what he himself will accomplish. He brings with him a new kingdom where you will belong. Now, citizenship in this new kingdom comes not through what you do, but solely through what Christ does. When Christ arrives, then he opens up a whole new future. It is in the person of Jesus Christ, who is the king, that the kingdom draws near. And Jesus comes near, not just present with them, but he comes speaking to them. Uh, In the second uh, petition of the Lord's Prayer, you know that we pray, Thy kingdom come. And according to Luther's explanation in the small catechism, though the kingdom surely comes without our prayer, we pray in this petition that it would come also to us. 
And that's precisely what Jesus comes to say. The kingdom, which you've prayed for, has now come near for you. And of course, Jesus also says, repent. And there's two common problems that we have when we encounter the word repent, and we also have it with the word follow. The first is that people assume that we must repent and or follow in order to get into the kingdom. The second is that people assume we must repent and or follow in order to stay in the kingdom. But this puts the cart before the horse. Jesus isn't speaking to your free will, trying to engage you so that you will somehow make the right life choice. He isn't hoping that you're suddenly going to say, I'm going to follow you, I'm going to give my heart to Jesus, I'm going to repent. Instead, when Jesus says repent, he's saying to you, be transformed. And this is actually brought about uh, by Jesus simply speaking this word to you, right? When he speaks this word, he's bringing you into the kingdom. He's saying, it's my promise that's going to transform you. You will believe in this good news. And upon hearing his words through the power of the Holy Spirit, God's chosen people are made new citizens of the kingdom of God. They enter the kingdom because Jesus speaks this new reality into existence. Jesus' words actually do what they say, right? Uh, not like our words, and parents, you know what this is like, right? You say, take out the garbage, and maybe it happens. Maybe it takes a long time, right? You say, uh, set the table, and how many times do you have to ask, right? Jesus' word isn't like this. He speaks his words into existence. Now, what should a man, Jonah, uh, be doing in this old world? He should be fishing, right? You know this, right? So I got the big eyes from you and I said I don't like fishing, right? A man should be fishing. And so this is where we find... Simon and Andrew and the Thunder Boys, James and John, they're fishing. And what does Jesus say to them? Jesus says, follow me. Transforming them, not through their will, but through his word. What Jesus says just happens. And so they drop their nets and they follow Jesus, right? Like we said earlier, they didn't stop to talk to mom and dad. They didn't discuss it with their wives first probably a mistake. They didn't write out a list of pros and cons. They just followed Jesus immediately. Jesus frees them by his word. And so they're no longer responsible for creating their own hope. No longer do they need worry about leaving a legacy or reaching some sort of pinnacle. They've been given the words of eternal life which freely bestow upon them this fulfillment that they seek. They will go forth and they'll learn to speak these words just as Jesus spoke them to bring into the kingdom of God all who hear their words through the power of the Holy Spirit. By Christ's word, true hope is given. Now, the time has come for me to speak Christ's promise for you. The kingdom of God has come near. How near? Well, the kingdom has come all the way to you, drawing you into it, closer to you than your next breath. By this word, Christ brings you into a new kingdom, a kingdom in which you belong, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. 
Through Christ's death and resurrection, your sin is forgiven. Your citizenship now and forever is in the kingdom of God. And as we go forth today in this new reality created for us through the promise of Christ, we take the kingdom of God with us wherever we go. So don't be surprised if the Holy Spirit works through you, through Christ's word, to bring others into the kingdom as well. You fishers of men or fishers of people. Amen. come down to the lake shore seeking neither the wise nor the wealthy but only asking for me to follow sweet Lord you have looked into my eyes Kindly smiling, you've called out my name. On the sand I have abandoned my small boat. Now with you I will seek other seas. You know full well what I have, Lord, neither treasure nor weapons for conquest, but just these fish nets and will for working. Sweet Lord, you have looked into my eyes, kindly smiling, you've called out my name. On the sand I have abandoned my small boat, now with you. I will seek other seas. You need my hands, my exhaustion, working love for the rest of the weary, a love that's willing to go on loving. Sweet Lord, you have looked into my eyes, kindly smiling, you've called out my name. On the sand I have abandoned my small boat, now with you. I will seek other seas. That is my mom's favorite song, so I'll have to tell her to catch us on Facebook. In Christ, you have heard the word of truth and the gospel of your salvation. We believe in him and are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us your sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God has mercy on you. He forgives you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. He strengthens you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he keeps you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you desire not the death of a sinner, but that all would repent and believe the gospel. In the epiphany of your Son, your time of salvation and your kingdom have come near. As this world passes away, give faithfulness and urgency to your church to proclaim the gospel of our Lord to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the harvest, as you called Simon, Peter, and Andrew, James, and John to follow you and made them fishers of men, so send faithful preachers of your gospel in our time. Increase the spirit of generosity to all who support the missionaries, seminaries, colleges, and other institutions of the church to spread the gospel and for the service of the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Lord, in view of every current distress, as the form of government in this world passes away, give constancy and contentment to your people in their God-given stations. Give comfort and faithfulness to the married and strengthen them to pass on the faith to the next generation. Show kindness also to the unmarried and assure them of the holiness of their place in life that they would be freed from anxiety and attend to holiness in body and spirit, undividedly devoted to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, preserve our nation with its leaders and all who serve for the good of this people. Preserve us in every nation in peace and quietness and bless our military personnel, especially Emily Went, Joseph Went, and Tabor Gluth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, turn us from every distracting anxiety and the dealings of this world that would draw our hearts away from your blessed gospel and its end, eternal life. Give us confidence in the resurrection and the peace of a clean conscience by the forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name. Graciously behold and help those for whom we pray. Especially, we lift up June Went, the family of Lenore Krieger, Chrissy Rogotsky, and Alice Trebish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us now and forever. Amen. Our sending hymn is from uh, With One Voice, page 723, The Spirit Sends Us Forth to Serve. The Spirit sends us forth to serve. We go in Jesus' name to bring glad tidings to the poor and favor to proclaim. We go to comfort those who mourn and set the burden free where hope is dim to share a dream and help the blind to see we go to be the hands of christ to scatter joy like sea and all our days to cherish life, to do the loving deed. Then let us go to serve in peace, the gospel to proclaim. God's Spirit has empowered us, we go in Jesus' name. 